I was traveling throughout Western Pennsylvania. And by the way, this was a very rich, fertile area of music. It's where Samuel Baird did his research uh, on uh, fife tunes. And he did this, he was at Penn State University, but he collected, I think it was, I can't tell you how many, thousand, but thousands of melodies from Pennsylvania, from, from western, southwestern Pennsylvania and south central Pennsylvania. Think about that. Thousands of unique melodies wow. that were fife tunes. And so it's very rich music, and that was became a, some of the fiddle repertoire too, and tons of dances. And here's this mid-Atlantic region who had some aspects of southern culture, but also some northern culture, you know, thrown in. It's kind of this, like, you know, very unique gray area in, in some regards with traditional music and dance. And so I'm spending a lot of time going to as many fiddle and, and dance events as I can, fiddle contests, but also, you know, traditional dances. And what I found was there was a distinction in the eyes of the organizers, the musicians, and the callers, whether it was a Grange Hall dance or Fire Hall dance. And what I found was when it was a Grange Hall dance, it was really the Grange was providing their hall as a service to the community. And they would make it, a, and that's part of what we're doing as Grange is our members get to uh, benefit from this facility we have. Where I found in the fire halls, the purpose of the dances was to raise money for the local fire company. So what that meant was Grange Hall dances were community service. Fire hall dances were fundraisers. What that meant was if a caller or a band wasn't doing well in, let's say, the monthly dance, you had to fire them and hire another caller or band who would bring in a crowd. To raise money. To raise money to support the, the volunteer fire company. And so the, the fire hall dances also sold more food because they raised money. They also had... 50-50 raffles. You came in and you paid your admission at a 50-50 the raffle. They also had cakewalks, uh, which were delightful, but raised money. And so they had all these ways of raising money. But what I found was it was a little more competitive that the caller and the band had to please the dancers because if they stopped coming, the fire hall had to cut them loose because they had to it, the purpose was not to lose money or do a community service. It was to make money, just like a fish fry would do or a pancake breakfast. You know, these were, you know, things that, that fire halls did to raise money. And, and, and what I realized was that there were things that happened at those that didn't happen at the others, like the fundraising, like that there's more food. And, uh, and what I found was throughout the region, there was a structure of a dance that there'd be a couple squares, couple couple dances a couple squares a couple cup all night long but different callers called different kinds of squares some only did singing squares some only did patter very few only did patter and the guy I studied with Jerry Goodwin only did patter call he until the dancers made him call singing squares he didn't in West Virginia they didn't do them where he was born but when he came to Pennsylvania they he had to. And so so that was just another example of context. You know, it's just the context of the hall changes certain aspects of the dance. Mm -hmm.